LED Strip is a super versatile product, and you probably realize this. In this video, I'm going to talk about how we built these 4 by 8 foot LED panels to create an environment for the performance of a lifetime, or a moment that will bring tears to the viewer's eye. Hi everybody, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs, and welcome to this video. I'm really excited to share this project with you. These panels are super portable, easy to set up, and they look so good. Let's dive into all of that in a bit, but first let's take a look at the why and how we built these panels. This project began when we decided we needed a stage design look for our weekly young adult gatherings. The goal this fall is to have our weekly gatherings outside away from our church building. And that's where these panels come in. We bought two sheets of four by eight foot foam, a half inch foam and painted them black. And while we used Fusion 360 to design and lay out the project, there are simpler ways to do this. We ended up marking out every 12 inches on the foam and carefully placing the LED strip. A dressable LED strip is directional, so be sure to pay attention to the arrows when placing it down. Also, the double-sided sticky tape, it's not going to stick very well if you have to peel it up, so be sure about where you put it is where you want it. To power this project, we are using a 70 amp power supply for each panel. The WS2812B LED strip we used has a pixel pitch of 300 LEDs across the 16.4 feet. The maximum possible consumption of 300 lights is 18 amps, and we have 800 lights per panel, so we needed 48 amps of power times two panels. This isn't our first LED project, but we did learn a lot from this one. To power the LEDs, we decided to do a power trunk that all of the strips would individually connect to. This ran down the one side and across the bottom of the panels. We measured out the main wire and cut spots where the strips attached with a short piece of cable. We used a solid core 22 gauge wire for the signal and a stranded 12 gauge wire connected with positive and negative for the 5 volt power cable. It wasn't super complicated to build, but it definitely took some planning. I was fortunate to buy the LED strip at a slight discount on Amazon Day a while back. So if you're thinking about doing a project like this in the future, be sure to jump on any opportunity for a discount, even if you don't know when you're going to be using it. To control the panels, we're using the Entech Octo. This is the LED strip controller that Entech sent me a while back, which we used in the LED cross video. The Octo is a great controller capable of controlling eight universes of pixels with its two outputs. Each of our panels has 800 LEDs being controlled by the Octo. In our design, there are 11 strips total. The first, second, and third strips are 25, 50, and 75 pixels. Those are all three on universe zero. Then the middle five strips are each 100 pixels. The first and second are universes one and two, then the third, fourth, and fifth strips are on octo output two, universes four, five, and six. Then the last three strips are the same as the first and are all on universe seven. We did this to keep things even and simple to program. So overall, the whole project came together very nicely. We have used it for a few weeks now and the results have been great. The feedback has been wonderful. I'm using Resolum Marina as the control software and I'm getting better at displaying the best content in the moment. I'm also working to get Resolum set up to receive color information from lighting consoles, which would really help automate the process of keeping colors consistent across the panels and then the stage lighting. One thing that we tested and then have used with this project has been the ability to set up our two panels to receive data from a single octo controller. Basically, we added two quick disconnect connectors to each output port on the octo. One goes to panel one and one goes to panel two. We weren't sure if this would even work actually, but we're very glad that it does because we only have the one controller. In the end, it turns out that it is possible to send data from a single controller to multiple addressable LED strip destinations. Just make sure you're connecting both signal and ground from the controller to both panels because we did have issues when we didn't connect the ground. With a second octo controller, we would be able to display content separate not just mirror both displays, which would be very cool, but it's great to know that you can do multiple panels like this with a single controller. I do want to point out that when I was setting up Resolum to control the pixels, I ran into a current limitation of the Entech Octo. Once I set up Universe 0 and assigned the necessary pixels, I then moved on to Universe 1. When I set up the 100 pixels on Universe 1, I noticed a gap in the physical pixels between Universe 0 and 1. My last channel used in Universe 0 was 450, and it turned out because I didn't assign the remaining pixels, 451 to 512 on universe 0, the pixels were not assigned and universe 1 started 20 pixels after it should have. 
Currently, there is no option in the NTEC Octo or Resolume to waste those remaining channels from 451 to 512 and move on to Universe 1. NTEC is aware of this issue and has sent the request to their developers team. They seem optimistic about adding this feature, so hopefully in the future, Octo users will be able to select the starting and ending address numbers for their for each universe, effectively giving users the ability to, in my context, waste the rest of the pixels on universe zero and move on to universe one, starting at channel one. NTEC does have their own pixel control program called ELM that comes with their controllers. I've been able to use this program to create LED strips and properly split them, resulting in the ability to control each pixel and delete the remaining pixels in the universe that I don't want to use. Because I'm using Resolume to display content and then ELM to run the pixels, I'm having to send an NDI feed from Resolume to the ELM software. I should probably do a whole video on the topic of controlling the pixels at some point, so let me know if you have interest in that, if you want to know more about that. But until then, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, comments, I'd love to chat. Leave a comment on this video or send me an email at crazyamazingnathan at gmail.com. Well, that's it for today. See you guys next time. Bye.